Hello friends, welcome back to another episode here on the channel. I hope you're all doing great and for anyone new to the channel, my name is Lee, also known as Osiris. Today we're going to be continuing on with our VGC Series 8 content. We're going to be playing another rental code today from one of our viewers. So before we get into today's team, a big shout out to everyone that has provided rental codes for the videos, for the content uh, over the next couple of weeks. We have a bunch lined up for next week, so very excited about those. If you haven't already submitted a team and you've got one you'd like to see featured on the channel, do drop it down in the comment section below and I will make sure to feature it as soon as I'm able to. If you do drop it though, just a little description about the team would be helpful, not necessary, but obviously any little information does help. Now we've got the team today, which is from uh, Justin Tang, like I've said, so very exciting to play this. Kieran White with the weakness policy, the comfy there to help set it up. Uh, reverse trick room or set trick room up if you need it. I like the team a lot. He has mentioned that Zassian is a little bit of a tough matchup. So against Zassian teams, you kind of need to try and get the Thunder Wave onto it. And then from there, it's pretty easy because you've got the Zapdos that can hit it for super effective damage to cure him as well. And then you've got Incineroar that kind of helps with the uh, mitigating its uh, attack boost that it gets every turn. Here is the rental code. If you do want to try it out yourself, there it is. Have fun on the ladder with it. And if you do try it out, let me know. I would love to hear and I'm sure Justin would like to hear your thoughts on the team as well i'll throw the rental code up at the end like we always do and uh, we'll jump in and have a couple of games with the team and see how it functions so without further ado friends let's get into the first game of today okay up first we've got kenji and they are playing a team of lapras tornadoes rillaboom zassian urshifu and hydreigon so to kick us off with a, a, a team concept, a team matchup that's already known to be pretty hard is is difficult for sure. Uh, the Zacian obviously causes a few problems. Uh, the uh, Hydreigon and the Urshifu all causes issues because they're all faster than Kurum. So our speed control is going to be really important for us in this matchup. Um, the Lapras. You know, uh, again, it's going to be able to set its screens up. We do have ways to kind of... Uh, I guess get around it. We do have Cortana that we can make use of, but you know, you've got to be careful around the Zassian, the Hydreigon again, it can Hydreigon carry fire type attacks, the Zassian with its, uh, with its uh, fighting type attacks as well do threaten us. Zapdos is a pretty good matchup here, you know, um, that's the one thing I would say is that like Zapdos can do some good damage to Thunderous, uh, to Tornadus, sorry, to Lapras, uh, Rillaboom. The Zacian, the Urshifu. So, like, Zapdos is really key for us in this match. So, I think it's definitely something we want to bring. Um, and maybe with screen support as well, it can do some work. Um, I think Grimmsnarl is going to be super imperative for us. I think we've got Incineroar. And now I kind of want to bring Cortana, but I feel like we need to bring our Restricted. And if we can set up a good board position with, like, the Thunder Wave Disruption or Speed Control through Max Airstream, if we go down that route, then, you know, Kurum's going to be in a good spot. But we need to ensure that we've got that Speed Control advantage going into those final turns where the Zacian or the Hydreigon's are likely to be kind of sitting um, in a late game position. Right, we'll get into this first one. And we're going to see Tornadus and Doggo come out. Zacian, right, well. It's not too bad because we've got the, the we, we can switch straight into, um, you know, well, we could go for the Thunder Wave and switch into uh, Incineroar here. No, that's not a bad idea. Um, because then we mitigate the attack spike, maybe minus, well, neutral. You've got to hope that we can take the Behemoth Blade, but is it worth is it worth the Thunder Wave to lose um, Grimmsnarl so early? Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. We'll have to see. Because then we're going to be relying on Airstreams if we get this off. So we get the Thunder Wave off onto the Zacian. So, Justin, key point number one. Thank you for that info because, you know, it does make it a little bit easier to manage. We're going to see an Icy Wind come out. It doesn't really affect us too much. Behemoth Blade likely to come out into the Grim Snarl. You would imagine. But the Zacian, uh, not going to be in the most comfortable of spots now going forward. You know, we do still have um, Tailwind that my opponent can take advantage of. But at least for the next turn, we've got an opportunity where we can potentially um, get Curum onto the field. Uh, fake out the Tornadus. And then just try and go after the, the Zacian. Although it might be better, really, if we get Zapdos onto the field. We can double tap into the Tornadus. Which is always useful. Um, the, the Zacian's in a bit of... Because the, the big thing here, uh, the Zacian is pressured for sure. And my opponent needs to get the Tailwind up. Now if the Tornadus doesn't have 
uh, protect, then we can we can we can totally nuke it this turn, which is useful. It's just whether or not we want to go for the airstream here or not. And um, I don't think we necessarily need to. I think we go max lightning into it just to ensure that we get rid of it. And then we can go for the airstream the next turn. And try and position Kurum onto the field. It's just going to be difficult with the Zassian, you know. Um, but we could always double tap the Zassian. And, you know, being paralyzed is always that um, one in four chance of it being fully paralyzed. So we might get some free turns here, which would be useful. Yeah, no, 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 no protect. So that is, that's really good. That's really good. We do get the max lightning, which is useful. Okay, so Tornadus, the speed control gone. Zassian's kind of in a in an awkward spot. It's neutral. It is paralyzed, which makes it a little bit more manageable, I guess. Uh, but we still can't keep ignoring it every turn because, you know, it's going to chuck out big damage after big damage. Close combat going to come out. Oh, and it actually picks up the knockout. That's an adamant one. Oh, that is, that is, oh it's a crit. It might not even be adamant. That crit is horrible. Okay. Because most of the time, Incineroar is kind of able to take that on neutral, you know? You do need a bit of investment, but it's always a calc worth looking at. So, ah, oh, this is tough. This is tough. But Kurum can do some work. We'll have to just see what we can do. We'll have to see what we can do. Depends what comes in, to be honest. Hi, Dragon. Okay. Well, hmm. It's tough. It is tough because the High Dragon probably maxes here. Well, we need to protect, get an airstream off into the high dragon, and then the next turn. Yeah, they're gonna max the high dragon. Um, okay. Yeah, it's tough because we only got one turn of max after this. You'd imagine the Zassian here probably goes after the Curum. Thing is, if we can, like, obviously, it's it's kind of self-explanatory. But if we can remove these two, we've pretty much got the game locked up. But it's easier said than done, you know? I think we need a little bit... Well, we just need to see what my opponent does here. Because if they've not got Airstream, then we're in a, we're in a decent spot. Because we can get the High Dragon the next turn with the Curum. Zapdos can then go Max Flare into the Zacian. We'll probably lose Curum on the back of that. There's a Max Wormwind. Yep. Don't mind that too much, though. Actually, maybe a Max Flare takes the Zacian because of the the, uh, the defense drop from the close combat, you know? Potentially. But we do get the weakness policy, so an Earth Power would take the Zacian there, there as well. So we've got a few options. Behemoth Blade, because they're not really concentrating too much down to the Zapdos here, kind of giving us a free run where we can get, I think, an, you know, an Ice Beam would probably get the High Dragon, but, it, you know, I really don't want to risk it. I mean, it probably does, doesn't it? It's stab. Stab plus two. We've got a massive special attack. I reckon we get the... I reckon we get it. The other option is... Yeah, and we have to max flare, I think. Yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. It's just Draco Meter can miss. So it is a little bit risky. Where the Ice Beam's a little bit more, you know, uh, guaranteed. We just need this to pick the knock-up out. Which it does! Come on! The comeback is on! Here we go! So the Ice Beam, all we need now... Is to get that ice beam onto the high dragon, and we're in the money. We're in the money. Okay, that's such a big knockout. So is that. Okay, there we go. Here we go. Okay, we get the crit. I'm pretty sure plus two with stab. Off our like ridiculous attacks that we get it anyway. So I don't think the crit mattered too much, and they got a crit against the Iron Cinero, so it kind of evens up a little bit. Although it's that, 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 that if this mattered, this, this is way more important. Right. Uh, okay. We've got Urshifu coming in. I th we're going to be fine. We're going to be fine now because we just double tap with an Ice Beam. I'm pretty sure it's the, uh, the, the, the dark one. No, it's the water one. It's the water. So we don't want to be Ice Beaming it. We can Earth Power it. And uh, we can uh, Thunderbolt it as well. So it is the water one, but the sun's up, which helps us out massively. And uh, we're going to be able to lock this one up with Zapdos. Zapdos putting in the work today. So there we go. And the Curum as well. Obviously can't can't um, discount what Curum's efforts have been in this one. But Zapdos doing some amazing work, obviously. We had a, a discussion on the stream last night 
about which, uh, which what do I prefer, Zapdos or Thunderous? Now, a lot of you know I've played a lot of Thunderous on the channel, uh, a lot of Thunderous on stream, um, but I would always pick Zapdos. I'd always pick Zapdos. It's always uh, it's my boy, my boy Zapdos. He's uh, yeah, he's he's the one, isn't he? I love Zapdos. It's very cool, and I do want to feature Glarian Zapdos as well um, soon on the channel. So that is something I am working around, um, and we will feature at some point. And I'm gonna probably uh, upload tonight's stream on the channel because I'm taking part in the weekly tournament that we hold over on Discord. I'll throw the code up at the end if you want to check that out or just join in. It's a good practice weekly. So, good game to my opponent and we will jump into our next battle of the day. Okay, up next today we got Marley playing a team of Eveltal, Melotic, Charizard, Raichu, Metagross and Whimsicott. Okay, so the restricted is going to be the Eveltal. Um, I think Kyurem matches up not too bad against it. Obviously, he is a bit slower than it, so we need to try and uh, get our speed control uh, under control. Uh, like, just make sure our speed control is alright in this match. Um, Zapdos, again, is a very good Pokemon. The only issue is the, the Raichu, which protects like pretty much everything weak to um, the Zapdos single target attacks. Uh, makes it a bit difficult to bring the speed control there. Quite useful from it, though. The other thing that we could think about is maybe Comfy. Comfy could be useful. It's just if we see something like um, Tailwind, the Curum, White is, is kind of threatened by the Metagross and the Charizard. Um, but the Thunder Wave, uh, Thunder Wave, we can't really make too much use of either because uh, the Raichu, like the Raichu is the big thing that we need to get rid of like early on. But if we set a Trick Room up, the Metagross is likely slower than everything, so unless a Tailwind gets set up, which we could kind of maybe bait early on. I think Zapdos is probably not a bad option. We could get the Sun up, potentially. Um, I think we've got Incineroar. We'll bring Comfy and Curum in the back for this one, and we'll uh, we'll see what we can do. Yeah, it's a tricky one, this, because the Raichu really overcomplicates everything, you know? It's like, you know, you've got, like, lines of and ways to deal with the, the threats on the field in front of you, but... Uh, that lightning rod is is like the big thing to get um, to take away first, but you don't want to kind of get too too preoccupied with it because like if you do that, you leave things like sitting next to it alone. Now we're probably going to see like a brutal swing here. Proc the Metagross weakness policy, and um, it go to town. But we can fake out Raichu here to kind of prevent that. Uh, and just go for a Max Flare. And mm, do we go for Max Flare? Do we go after the Raichu? I think. I think we go after. We go after the Raichu here. Go Max Flare into it and, and Fake Out into it as well, because we don't want to proc the weakness policy without getting like the Sun up. We want to kind of get our Sun up if we can. We may see the Metagross Max here and go Max Quake into Incineroar, but hopefully we are able to take that. It's non-stab, so we should be able to, depending on the um, how the Incineroar is trained. But Zapdos again going to be quite key for us in this match, you know? So let's see what my opponent does. Because if they want to go for the Brutal Swing, then, you know, it's quite... It's a decent option for them to think about. Because you think if we're Incineroar, we're probably like, well, the opponent is going for a fake out here because the right is faster than us. So my opponent is probably in that frame of mind of thinking well, the Incineroar is probably going to likely switch out a parting shot here or go for an attack into the Metagross. So I've got the opportunity to go for that Brutal Swing, which is why I'm kind of going down this route to try and remove it because it's such a big threat. We identified it early on, you know, in team previews being the one thing that really prevents Zapdos from being able to kind of function as well as we want it to. The thing is, though, we just need to make sure that the, the Metagross is not getting that weakness policy procced until um, until we're in a position to kind of take it down so we're not really getting super punished for for activating that item. Yeah, they're definitely going for the Brutal Swing. Yep, okay, well, this is fine. And really what we want to try and do now is, is get the Incineroar maybe... Oh, wow. The Raichu takes it like an absolute champ. I cannot believe it cannot believe it didn't go down to that wow we're gonna see a rock fall as well okay jeez are you kidding are you kidding that does so much damage critical hit that's really unfortunate that is very unfortunate oh, that's really unfortunate um I 
think the only thing we can potentially go for here is is uh, the double up into Metagross, the Flare Blitz, get the Sun up, and then the Flare Blitz. But it's likely they go after like they because they can brutal swing here for sure. But they're likely to go more after the um, the Incineroar I think this turn than the Zapdos. But if Incineroar goes down here and Zapdos is still around, then we get comfy in, and then we can go for that floral healing. Okay, Electro Web, not ideal. Because now Zapdos is probably going to be slower than the Metagross. Potentially, yeah, Max Quick into the um, okay, yeah, okay. Well, I guess it' not not the worst because we're still we're not out of it yet, but we're not. I mean, we do have the uh, the weakness policy that we'll be setting up, which is not ideal. Um, let's see what this does. Proxy weakness policy. Is bound to. No, no weakness policy. It's assault best. Okay. And we can max guard and we could ally switch as well. Do we ally switch? Not the best play. Um, oh, floral healing. Floral healing is still not a bad option because uh, we're not going to take. I don't think we take a max rock fall, which is what they're going to go for, isn't it? They're gonna go for the rock fall, 100%. Um, we could max guard and trick room. Because that puts us in a better position, especially after the, the electro web. And then we, we floral heal in the next turn. But I think you're probably, uh, if you're my opponent, I think you just Electro Web again and just go Steel Spike into Comfy. Which is maybe where the, the it depends if you, it's where the priority lies. Do you want to get rid of the Sun or do you want to get rid of uh, the Trick Room threat, you know? Oh, they're going after the Zapdos. Okay, well the Trick Room's going to definitely help us out now uh, because we've got the option to fl go Floral Healing and go Heat Wave, which is really, really, really good for us. Um, but it does depend what comes in in the back from my opponent, you know. Okay. So, Sun's still up. We'll go for that and we'll go for that Floral Healing in the Zapdos. Give it some life back, because that's what we need. Um, and if the comfy kind of uh, sticks around, that will be useful. I could see it being taken down by the Metagross, because it's just like the support line, you know, for the Zapdos. Rock Slide's probably not going to take us down after this Floral Healing. I wouldn't have imagined um, being an Assault Vest variant. Yeah, and that health is so nice. Bullet Punch coming out. Okay, that's perfect. Yeah, that's ideal. That's exactly what we want my opponent to be doing. And get the heat wave off. I'll do a lot more damage to the Metagross. Get the Raichu. Not enough, but I mean now Zapdos is going to be back to kind of fully kind of fighting ways. So what's the Metagross' has set? It's got Stomping, Rock Slide, Bullet Punch. It must have Iron Head. It must have Iron Head. Probably goes for that the next turn onto the Comfy. So Whimsicott coming out, which is fine because we can just go for that heat wave again. Get all our health back. Yep. Uh, the other option here is go Drain and Kiss into the Wimmy and then Heat Wave. But I do worry about a Rock Slide coming out from the Metagross. And we need to kind of... Like, Zapdos is quite important to us here, I think. Okay. Wimmy protecting. Which, again, fine. Fine. And now if Comfy goes down, we're actually in a not a bad spot because Curum can come in at will underspeed the Wimmy, so we could double tap that slot with a Heat Wave and Ice Beam. The Metagross will be in range to go down for another Heat Wave the, the, the following turn. Um, okay, they're just Rock Sliding, which is fine, you know. The thing that we, we really need to be doing here is, um, is making sure that we kind of stall out these Trick Room turns long enough to get the Metagross and just you know, 
for a certain t like time, like Comfy, if it's still healthy, when our Trick Room does end and, and they get the Tailwind up, then we're in a way better spot uh, to maybe set the, the Trick Room up again, especially if the Wimmy hasn't got Taunt. So that Floral Healing coming in, so valuable here. I mean, Comfy has like turned this game around for us completely, you know? Such a good Pokemon. There's another bullet punch coming out. And the Bibiri Berry procking on the Comfy here. So doing its work. Good old Comfy. Ticking. Just tickling. Tickling Comfy. Um, as we get another heat wave off. And Zapdos, to its credit, has not missed a single heat wave yet. So, you know, that is that is brilliant. Um, the Draining Kiss going to be able to get the Whimsy caught the next turn. Yeah, it's not one for the Tailwind, which is I like ideal. And Comfy, because it's a, a boss. Just takes that pretty pretty well. And what's my opponent's last Pokemon? Evelto? I would imagine. Evelto. Okay. Draining Kiss. I mean, does does yeah. I mean Heatwave Draining Kiss. It's probably what we want, right? How many turns of the oh, window we got left? Trick room one. I think the thing is here is probably Switch Zapdos out. Go Draining Kiss into the Whimsicott. Because then Zapdos' speed will be reset. And we're going to be able to outspeed that Eveltal and put a bit more pressure onto it. Um, the Whimmy's going to protect. It doesn't matter because unless... Well, yeah, that's the bad thing. If oh, Eveltal is going to protect as well. The bad thing there would have been if the Avaltal attacked into the, the Comfy. Um, that would have been pretty terrible. But I think we're kind of alright. Like the Avaltal is going to outspeed Kurum here. But I mean we're going to be able to get an Ice Beam onto it. It's not going to be able to knock us out. And the Draining Kiss will get the Wimmy before it's able to Tailwind. So we should be able to clean up with uh, Zapdos. In the end anyway when we come back in with it. Because Draining Kiss obviously gets that... Um, priority boost to plus three so it's kind of like the same level as like extreme speed so it will get the um the jump on the tailwind here from the whimmy which is always good so i'll pick up the knockout zapdos and uh comfy kind of just dismantled my opponent's team which is amazing to see you know i uh comfy one of those pokemon that's really slept on but it does such a good job when you when it does come to a come to a match um Okay, they, it's not, not ideal, but I mean, we're not in any any real problems, you know. When Zapdos comes in, we just need a bit of chip onto this Evelto. Wow, a bit of chip, I say. A bit of chip, I say. And the freeze. <laughs> just to rub the salt in. I do have to. I feel bad for my opponent now because that uh, the freeze is a, a pretty unfortunate. But it doesn't really change the outcome of the game, you know. The game would have been exactly the same. Uh, even if... Worst comes to worst, we lose the the Curum and the Comfy. We got Zapdos to come in, guaranteed to outspeed the Avelto. We've got like full health of it, so there's no way that you're gonna beat. Um, oh, does thaw out, which is good. Okay, so yeah, doesn't do. Uh, it doesn't remove anything. So we get to see the game play out as it was meant to anyway. So the freeze never existed, friends. And the Ice Beam, like I say, this should actually just take it down, even though we are minus two from the initial damage that we, we did to Veltal there. And uh, yeah, very good game to my opponent. And what a nice game for us to kind of wrap up with today. So, uh, Justin, thank you so much again for the team. Uh, really good, really exciting games today and really entertaining. I hope everyone that has watched this enjoyed them as well. I'll hop over now and I'll remind you all of the rent code for today's team. And before I forget, friends, this Friday over on our Discord, we are hosting one of our weekly tournaments. It's a friendly tournament, but it is Series A. It's a great place for you to get weekly practice. We are running them, like I say, weekly. Every single Friday, they'll be kicking off at 8 p.m. UTC time, and they'll be running till 11. You'll have roughly enough time to do about 15 matches in total, and we'll post the results afterwards in the Discord with the uh, with the usage stats from the Pokemon that I've been using the tournament. It's a really good resource and uh, if you want to get involved like I say the code to join the tournament this Friday the 5th of March is up on the screen right now so I hope you enjoy it okay friends here is Justin's rental team for his Curum white team that we featured today on the channel if you do try it out I hope you have a lot of fun we've got to see it in a lot of different scenarios today and you know even when things are starting to look at their worst the team has a way and has tools to kind of turn it around and really clutch it back and spin that momentum around which says a lot 
lot about the team in general. Uh, I really like the build. I like the item choices. I think Justin's done a phenomenal job with this team and it's a lot of fun to play. So definitely give it a go. If you want to play Kieran White, this is definitely one for you to try out. Again, big shout out to Justin and also for anyone else that has submitted those rental codes. Um, if there is rental teams that you want to see featured, again, just drop them down in the comment section below with that rental code and we will feature them either here on the channel or we'll feature them on our streams. So uh, friends, thank you so much as always for tuning in. It's been a great episode today. Really enjoyed it. Hope you have. Have a great weekend. We'll be back with more content very soon. And uh, until then, take care of yourselves and I'll see you in the next ones. Until then, take care. Bye-bye.